Kia ora and welcome to the Stag Roar. <laughs> I'm taking over this podcast. Um, the beginning of this is Ryan needs to tie up my hair in order for us to start. This is uh, unplanned. <laughs> You're in your undies. This is, this is the classic um, TV gag. I've got to get practicing this because... <laughs> Okay, look in the mirror. No, no, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> Ryan, you need to look at the front of my hair. In the yeah, it's good. It looks awful. No, it's horrid. No, you need to start again. You need to start again. Yeah, that's my attempt. Oh, that looks good. Anyway, now for the real start, we're, <laughs> we're back with Alex Pohl, the beautiful, my lovely Alex Pohl. Thank you. Yeah. Um, she joined us in episode 20 when she was pregnant. Yeah. And now, what are we now? Nine months on, it's a bit different. We Nine have, months on, is it? From, from, from then. Wow. Well, she must have been six months pregnant. Whoa. Yeah. That's not bad. And that episode 20 did pretty well, really. Um, 150 listens and 245 views on YouTube. So, pretty solid effort from the better half. No surprises, really. No way, no way. <laughs> Be humble. <laughs> anyway, Be humble. Al, what did you do last weekend? We were super lucky to have your sister and Sam here. That was yes, cool. Yes, we had my sister here and we filled in the weekend very easily. We went to Ethel which is a really neat food store, deli place. So we met them there. They drove down from the airport and then we looked around Brunswick. Brunswick heads and it's halfway between the airport and us. And Bellin us, pretty yeah. much exactly the same time. So we met halfway. North of Byron Bay. And looked around there. I bought Billy a little outfit. <laughs> and so I got some shoes, yeah. secondhand shoes. And then it was raining that day. It was actually quite cold. Which, which what we eat for lunch is so good. At Ethel. At Ethel. Is that lunch? Yeah, for brunch. It's like ten o'clock. Yeah. Sausage rolls. Pork buns, they were good. And Ryan had a pulled pork bun. Yeah. Pulled pork bun was full of pork for the belly. It was so good. I don't know what drink I had. I can't remember. A, ch- a chai, I think. Mm, I'm going to try. Mm. Yeah. So that was fun. And then we drove back to Ballina and we showed Sam and Olivia the big prawn in Ballina, which is famous. I'm going to retie really my hair once more. <laughs> I just need to get it right so I can focus, you know? You know, it's like going to the gym, eh? you got to get it. Yeah, i got to get it here so I can see it. It's really annoying. Um, Went to the big prawn, which is a huge prawn at Bunnings, it's like a monstrous big prawn. And they were following us in their rental car. As soon as they saw it, they just looked so excited. I eh? <laughs> see them in the car, they were just like, oh my god, the biggest thing that we ever imagined. So that was a highlight. <laughs> and then, yeah, we just hung out. We went to the farm at Byron. We went to Combi for lunch at Byron. We walked around there. Saw a python on the footpath in Byron, my seventh snake. Um, the day before uh, Sam and Olivia's first day, we went on a big walk to the break wall in Byron. And if you go in the in afternoon, Bellin. Bellina, sorry, Bellina, where we live, um, if you go at the right time, around three, between three and four, get to the break wall, the sun is on the rocks, and then all the dragons are, yeah. dragons are sitting on the rocks and normally the swell is coming is it, I don't know is the tide coming in at this time but it changes in. every day doesn't it going out no coming in coming in coming in and the dolphins swim out the, yeah the dolphins are swimming out and it's amazing to see them jumping through the waves they're always there at that time so we took Sam and live out there which is cool and on the way home we saw a python in the bush so that was their first day. Python and dolphins and dragons. And the second day, another python. Second day, there's another python, which was cool. Um, 
Yeah, what else did we do with them? We, we oh, went to Bangalore, Newry Bar. Newry Bar is amazing. Went to Harvest Deli. Yeah. What else did we do? That was pretty much Sunday. We were naked. Well, that, <laughs> Hi, we that was the whole weekend and the time they were there. And we did a beach on Sunday. Sat on the beach, had some drinks, had lots of good food. They made us burgers. We made them a roast. Yeah. It's that's, awesome. That's good. Really fun. I wish they lived here. Yeah. And why is, it, why, why is it so good having somebody here? Especially, oh, especially yeah. compared to the last two days where you've been by yourself again. <laughs> Where did my tail go? Oh, my tail went over there. Sorry. Did you see that? Yeah. Where do I, I do? just noticed. Don't, okay, everyone, if you ever see food in someone's teeth, tell them it's embarrassing. That's oh my god. Okay. Um, why was it good having them here? Yeah, especially compared to the last two days that you've been by yourself. Uh, um, I suppose. Uh, I don't have a car. Well, we have a, one car that we share and. Just having people in the house that I don't, have to, I don't have to go to is really nice. And someone just to pass Billy to. Or people that actually want to hang out with Billy. <laughs> okay. Let me reword that. It's not what I wanted to say. Um, family who don't have kids. You know, people who don't have their own children to worry about will happily hold on to a baby. It's more what I'm saying. And it's your family. You can just be like, Oh, can you hold Billy for me? And they'll be like, yes, of course. Like, I'd love to just do anything to help you, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and um, I don't really like mum groups. So okay. I don't really like kind of going to those things. So when family's here, you go and do normal life stuff and you don't have to talk about a baby all the time, although I probably do because it's all I have to talk about. Why don't I like mum groups? I don't want to offend anyone, but I find them very cringe. And I feel like I lose my identity if my whole time alive at the moment is just spent doing mum and baby stuff. Like, I don't want to talk about a baby all the time. I don't want to go to, like, mummy groups. I don't feel maternal. I don't feel mumsy. I don't want to go to mum groups. Sorry. Right, yeah, so that brings us on to our next question, and it's probably a similar answer to when you were six months pregnant. Who is Alex Pohl today? What was my answer then? You weren't really sure. It was, it was a very, you were very internal, you said, at that point. Oh, yeah, you were good too. Yeah. You were, like, sheltering down, bunkering down, nesting. Ah. <sighs> I don't know, that's a really hard question. I How would you describe yourself feel, now though? It was, it's quite turbulent, isn't it? I feel like, I said to you last night, I feel like I just exist in order for Billy to survive. Does that make sense? Elaborate on it. Makes sense to I, me, because I'm here. <laughs> I feel like I can't put myself first anymore yeah. and I can't think of myself at all my mind is just consumed by her I, some days I'm like oh my god I haven't even considered going to a gym or oh I haven't even considered that I could do a workout at home I walk heaps so I guess I'm not thinking oh I need to exercise but I'm like I would never now like proactively do something for myself you're doing uh, does that make sense 5 kg repeats 50 60 times a day oh, with Billy and I now have a thing called mum thumb and I'm gonna need to get a splint for my thumb <laughs> because look at this you know if you're listening to the podcast you can't see but like this is my good hand you can make the L sign well, this is my bad hand it's more like a V <laughs> It's so painful in there. It feels like I'm snapping. And I have to carry six kilos probably on a hand that's in agony. Do you just feel like, um, for me, I don't want to be negative. 
Right? I just feel honest. like really gross all the time, like because you don't have time for yourself. As in, I have a sore hand, but then I to go and make an appointment and go and see someone and get it fixed is hard now, harder than if I didn't have a baby, or to to even have a shower some days or wear clean clothes for a whole day. And then you're like, what's the point of wearing anything nice? Because Billy spews all the time, or you end up going walking and getting sweaty, and yeah, you just feel gross all the time, I reckon. You don't wear makeup or anything, you just feel like you go, 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 and you just, it doesn't even matter what you look like anymore, it doesn't matter if you haven't had a year cut, it doesn't matter how you feel, you just need to keep going to keep a baby alive. So, before I had her, it's like, have all these dreams and aspirations and you meditate and you have a routine for yourself and you like focus on your mind and being the best you can be and now it's completely gone out the window because you can't even, you just have to survive, you don't thrive, you just survive. I call it the motherhood mind fuck. <laughs> Where's that from? I just made it up. Oh right. Yeah. You, you call it the motherhood mind fuck. Yeah. That's good. Um, speaking of Haircuts, you did get to have one. Like a month ago. Yeah, what was it like going and getting a haircut? It was good because you get a um, hot drink and you can just sit there and drink it in peace. <laughs> and that's how guilty I have to get up and run away. You go and you get, like make a t- cup of tea and then, or sometimes I have a cup with a tea bag and boil the jug and next thing I'm go and get Billy and then a few hours later I'm like, oh my god. I'm just making a cup of tea. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's just weird how your life changes. Like, the littlest things don't even get to happen. Like, the simple thing of making a tea and finishing it is just not even a thing. And that can really, like, frustrate me. Yeah, because I feel like, oh my god, I couldn't even do that. Like, that's really, like, what is it? That's probably my first real problem. There's people that have children in hospital with cancer. Like, let's put it in perspective. Yeah, it's true. But it's, this is the thing. I'm, I love Billy. She is like our greatest joy. We talk about her all the time. She's amazing. I wouldn't trade it for the world. So I'm not ungrateful. You love her. You feel grateful what could be better in our lives we live in australia we live at the beach i get to stay home with her i you know i i'm so lucky i get to do that but that doesn't mean that i don't find my love it hard and because i i find it hard but it doesn't mean i don't love her it doesn't mean i'm ungrateful you're allowed to struggle with motherhood just like you might ask someone oh do you like your job people always say oh you know there's things about every job you don't like same with being a mum. There's heaps of things you don't like about it and it's okay. That is okay and it's allowed. You do not have to enjoy <coughs> being a mum. You don't have to. And I think there's all this pressure that women are just born to be mothers and they should naturally enjoy it and love it. And if you don't, then you're a bad mum. Or you're ungrateful. And you're hurting other people's feelings who might really want a baby but can't have one. How I feel in like having postnatal depression or postnatal depletion and struggling with motherhood has nothing to do with other people trying to get pregnant or nothing to do with how much I love Billy. It's like my own personal struggle and I'm allowed to have that. And I know there's people on other journeys, people who really want babies and who might think, oh, you know, that's pathetic, you find it hard. But it's not like you're allowed to struggle. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah. And un- unlike a job, you can't leave your jo- this job. You can't have a sick you day. Really you don't get a, a you don't get a weekend from it. You don't ever stop. You just don't. Ever, you can never just call in sick. Some mornings you get up and you're like, I can't possibly go on. And you just think, how can I make this day as easy as possible? It's going to be the easiest thing. I'm not going to do any sleep training in inverted commas I'm not going to sit in Billy's room and pat her and go shh after she's woken up after 30 minutes because I'm exhausted and that I'm just going to get frustrated really easily doing that so I'm just going to get her up and just 
maybe try to feed her to sleep or wear her in the front pack for a, a whole sleep just because that's easier on me like I just, some days you just think I'm just going to make this day as easy as possible so sometimes I have a podcast going or music going or the other day I put, played the Kardashians <laughs> Why were we watching the Kardashians? Just because I wanted something trashy and I couldn't, um, that I didn't have to focus on. Just some noise in the background. We don't have a TV. It was just on my laptop. I just needed something in the background. But, but, people, I did play a TEDx talk. So, I thought, oh, I should just, instead of playing Billy Baby-ish stuff, I should play a really smart stuff. Brene Brown. Yes. Yeah. And I... A few months ago, I made Billy an email address. I yeah. told you, eh? No. Yes, I did. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure I did. We'll just pretend I did. Yeah. I made Billy an email address, and I send things to it. So I sent her the TED Talk. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And so, Brene Brown was talking about vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember much, so don't ask me about it. <laughs> Um, I was feeding Billy at the time. On your Facebook and Instagram, you like to portray true trueness, vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think it's important? I think you've already kind of touched on it, but why do you think it's important to be <laughs> realistic on one on social media and two about mental health? Well, I still think that if you looked at my Instagram, it would look like I'm having the time of my life, because photos don't portray feelings. Right? Yeah. Like, you can't even feel the exhaustion of a new mother. You're like, oh my god, look at this beautiful photo with babies. Oh, it's so romantic. Oh, I want to stay at home with a baby. But you don't actually know how fucking shit the mum feels <laughs> some of the time. But why do I think it's important? Because um, uh, after I had Billy, the first two weeks were amazing. She was asleep pretty much the whole time. That's probably why. And Ryan was home. And then when I was alone, Ryan was at work, um, I started just finding it extremely hard. And I didn't realise that everyone else felt like that. I thought everyone everyone was just going on walks to cafes and they were able to have showers and do their makeup and dress their baby in beautiful clothes and take these beautiful photos. And that... They were getting all this sleep, and I just thought from the social media that every other woman but me was just having the best time being a mum, and it was so easy and natural, that I really didn't, I didn't realise that, that what I felt was pretty much what every single new mum feels like, and I was too scared to say to my mum and dad, oh my god, this is so hard, I really need help. I was too scared to tell them until one day I just broke down. I rang my dad and he couldn't even understand what I was saying because I was just like, I can't do this. And I texted him saying, this is so horrible, but I feel like if I gave Billy away, I wouldn't even miss her. Like that's, And that's so normal. Mum said she had exactly the same thoughts. She's like, if someone had knocked on the door when you were a baby and said, can I take your baby? I would have said yes and given it to them. I didn't know people felt like that and no one really ever told me that. So that's I think that's kind of dangerous that mum, new mums are sitting at home feeling like shit and they're too scared to tell anyone. They think they have to make it look like they've got their shit together. And they're even too scared to tell their parents because they, they don't want their... I don't know, they, you don't want to disappoint people or think you're a failure for um, finding motherhood hard. But you've never done it before. You've never had training for it. Like, how are you meant to know how hard it's going to be or what, how you're going to feel? So, yeah, I think if people are aware that everyone feel, most people feel like it's hard and that it's really common to struggle with it, then you'll be more open to asking for help and admitting, like, hey, I'm struggling too. And then if I... So many people have messaged me saying, I've seen your stories on Instagram or whatever, and, and I really struggled too, or I've got two kids now and 
I've felt just like you do with my first child and the first year was so hard and I had anxiety or I had no sleep or they've said so I've heard so many like 20 plus women have messaged me telling me their stories and just how much they struggle with it and that they felt like they had to be a natural mum from day one and they were too scared to tell their mums that they were struggling like you know you're not meant to do it alone which we are in Australia and um with that you know you said you were too scared to tell your, to tell your parents mm. and then like what was the actual reality of when you told your parents like they came down and made dinner for us and oh yeah so I rang dad on the Friday I think it was crying and he's like it's okay he's like do, do I need to come to Cambridge I was like yes can you come he's like okay and he's like I'll leave work so he left work in the middle of the day bless and he picked up mum who also left work and they drove straight to Cambridge and Ryan had been home I had called Ryan too he's like I can't do this I don't know what I'm doing I was still in my underwear like <laughs> Billy had been sick all over me and she peed on me, and I was just like, oh my god, and I hadn't eaten yet or whatever, I was just so tired, and Ryan came home, and he bought me a journal to write in, and he's like, go and do some yoga, and he put my yoga mat in the room with the sun, and I just lay on it, like, I just lay on the floor, like, oh, I hate this, <laughs> And I was just so tired. The sleep deprivation was a really scary feeling. That wasn't even the worst sleep deprivation. Either. It wasn't. Um, but, you know, you're recovering from birth still. And labour and everything. Breastfeeding and all that stuff. Luckily, breastfeeding was pretty easy for me in the beginning. Um, but yeah, my parents came down. I think they cooked us dinner and then a few weeks later mum came and stayed for two nights and did all the washing and just took all the washing to the laundromat as well and got it all washed and folded and paid for it and she did some groceries and made my lunches and made our dinners and brought down heaps of food for us and yeah, my family stocked the fridge. Yeah. That's that was good. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, you just cannot do it alone. It's... I guess you can, but you not want to enjoy it. And, yeah, so having my sister here, it just makes it being a mum more enjoyable, sharing it with your family. And I really want to go home. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about the poll you did this week about should, should you go home? And what it was like, 83% people said, yes, yeah, you should said, go yes, home. Said, yes, go back to New Zealand. Go back to New Zealand. I think we should because now I've seen eight snakes, two brown snakes. Deadly. The most feared snake in Aussie I've seen twice. One of them fell on my feet. I just think it's a sign. I should go home. I like these glasses, but there's a reflection on them. Oh, can you let it I could just sit like this. Yeah. <laughs> the blue blockers. That's why it's purple. Purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Ah... I love Australia. The weather is amazing. We live by the beach. What would I be doing with otherwise? You know, in Cambridge, what would I be doing? Walking on to the footpath. It'd <laughs> probably be raining, so oh, it did rain heaps. Uh, that's, that's why we had to do this plumbing <laughs> at our house. Yeah, I know. It rained a lot there. Yeah. So, but the one thing I'm so gutted we left behind is blackout thermal blinds. Mm. I'll got, move home for those. This is like the best piece of the blinds. There's a big gap. <laughs> Not ugly, eh? Hey? And um, no yeah, all it's vertical our, blinds. All our windows are vertical blinds. Yeah. And in our room, there's even a they set that are uh, like material, so they don't even block out the light. There's like white material, and then the neighbour turns on his bathroom light and it just shines yeah. through. It's like. It was garish dawn. Yeah, so it's nice. Yeah, we need to black out Billy's room yeah. the day he sleeps. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Aussie. The weather's amazing. We live across the road from the beach. There's an amazing cafe down the road. People here are very, very nice. <laughs> yeah. 
That's so friendly. Very, very nice. That's so friendly. <laughs> Ryan, sounds like you're talking about a piece of cake. Oh, that, very, at very the bell, nice. the cake's very, very nice. Too. <laughs> That's what I have for my birthday. Mm, so yummy. Um, people here are lovely. We just meet people at farmers markets and I've met some really lovely mums. I say I don't like mums groups, but I I love going to mums and pubs yoga. I've met some cool people there. Excuse me. And, um... The yoga, yeah. the yoga yeah, that you do go to on Saturday as well is good. You guys been for coffee? I've been once. Once? But I go to a, a normal yoga, not a mum's and mum's yoga on Saturday sometimes. I haven't been for a while, but um, yeah, uh, I've met a few peeps there, and some of the same people, and we went up to coffee once. Yeah, it's cool. People here are really lovely. It's very friendly, small town. Yeah. Small town vibe. Um, people love yeah. having a coffee here. They do love having coffee here, eh? yeah. especially at the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone's, it's easy to meet people here, I guess. But I, partly, part of the reason, I have to stop like touching my face and stuff. Part of the reason I want to go home is to have old, my old friends around who don't have kids. And I'd love to just go out for dinner or go to the movies with people who don't have kids. So I can talk about other stuff and not lose my identity. Which, thank you to Jackie Clement who was talking to me about that the other day. Yeah, about oh. not losing your identity. And what did you get out of it? That is what I want to know. Yeah. And so, okay. How are you, <laughs> how are you not going to lose your identity or how are you going to find an identity? By doing that. We're hanging out with old friends. Oh, well. Gotcha. <laughs> so, speaking of talking about other things apart from babies, although, you know, good, don't change it. It's almost fun. Yeah. I'm getting up the questions that people asked us. So the first Ryan's glasses, by the way. So the first question came from Alex Murray. And um, he would love to know why in how penguins don't uh, feet don't freeze. I've got a friend called John Bosanoff who would answer that question and I call him Pocket John. He's a photographer and he goes to Antarctica. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, he goes to both, but he sees penguins in Antarctica. Yeah. And polar bears in the Arctic. Yeah. And he loves penguins. <laughs> you had a theory the other day, though. Um, I think you just said that they're so hot. The feet don't freeze because they're actually really warm. Mm -hmm. And so they just melt the snow around them as they go. Mm -hmm. It's nice and snowy. Um, Nick Grant wants to know if I own a shirt. He, well, he own. He does, but if he stood up, got no pants on. Today. He's got no pants on now. <laughs> like, what the hell? Before we're sitting at dinner, he's got no top on, and he stands up to walk over there, and he's just wearing socks and undies. Like, hey, you came on this trip. <laughs> Part of the reason is because Billy spews spews all the time, and he Ryan he doesn't want to get spewed on. Yeah, and so. In the morning, in the mornings, I come back from the gym, and sometimes we'll have a shower, or I'll just be hot in the gym. So, yeah, and then you don't want to put your work clothes on because you might get food or spew on them. And then spew? it's one of the times where it's usually Alex and Billy are up, and so Alex takes lots of photos then, and need us, to the fam. Needless to say, I probably don't have a top off. <laughs> well. I guess you would, even before Billy, you would wear your work clothes, cook breakfast, eat breakfast, and then you'd spill the food on yourself, or toothpaste. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and also, also, I quite like getting up in the morning and getting sunshine on my skin, so Aww. that was another reason why in the morning I don't, wouldn't have a time on. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like clothes. What's what's so bizarre about that? Que about that? Well, that's no surprises. About that question is, that's what people used to ask 
be at school all the time. Oh. Ryan, do you own a, own a top? But I don't know where that came from. I think it might have just been that. I was at, Strange. I was at the pool, uh, the pool a lot, so. Because mm. obviously at school you didn't go around topless. No, you didn't. And then you didn't exist. Unless you're doing it in the car, I can't imagine. <laughs> Conservative and cold. Hey, gets used to sunbathe in the summer. Conservative. Yeah. What's been your favourite feature of this area, Alex? Oh. That's not a question from Facebook. That's just a question I've got. Favourite feature of? Of this area. Of Ballina? Or Northern Rivers. Oh, like, like, um, um, feature, like the big prawn. <laughs> you got a feature? Well, it's, it's an attraction, but it's how we like. Do you mean like favourite feature in like the beach or? Oh, yeah. How do you? Oh, yeah. Like, or, you, or, oh. or like going to Byron or Neri Bar or just the whole vibe of the place. Or. I really like the vibe of Neri Bar, Harvest, Neri Bar Merchants, the kids shop at <laughs> that doll I want to buy for Billy. The wooden toys I want to buy for the Billy. Rainbow for Billy. Yeah. All the rainbow for Billy. All the books. Oh, what was that? Pen Speaking Errol, of penguins. Errol the Penguin, the book, is so cute. Sam found it when we were there and I really want to buy it now. Little Bill. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit of blue light. That one's changed. Oh, we look at the glasses back there. <laughs> We've got another book called Where's the Green Sheep from your mum. That's, yeah, pretty, that's pretty, pretty classic. From Nina and Papa. Yeah. Right. Just a side note. Yeah. The other question was from Gemma Major, our good friend. Who, hey, Hon. Who we had on like two or three episodes ago. Hey. Very good chat. Um, I need to see that. Yeah. And sh she wants to hear some parenting real talk, which was, which was started with, but I guess that's kind of what this podcast is about. We I'm talk holding back, I don't want to be too real. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we first, when we had you on an episode, to, it got like three people liking it as well. So, Stacey, oh, I was oh you're one of the people who liked it. I was one of <laughs> Stacey Byfield and Michelle Howie um, oh, also, also, also liked it. I've talked to Michelle a lot. She's so lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Just, just someone that Nabs talked about because they did... Um, TEDx Real Kura together, which was oh, really cool. Yeah, I met Michelle at a thing in Waihe Beach. Yeah. What was woman that? who gets shit done. Just before I was pregnant, too. Yeah. Yeah. But she had the same midwife as us. Yeah. She recommended home birth. And I've talked about to Michelle about how I've struggled being a mum. And yeah, she's she's really helped me. Nice. Um, yeah. So we kind of touched on it, but. What did you expect of being a mum? What did you expect? Um, I don't know because I, I really had just focused on the birth and hypnobirthing class. Highly recommend. Although this is not an advice talk, I'd highly recommend hypnobirthing and finding an awesome midwife, mm. home birth. We changed, but touching on that, we changed midwives. We did change midwives. After I spoke to Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what did I expect about being a mum? I I just had an inkling it was going to be hard, but I didn't realise how overwhelming it would be, how relentless it would be. I didn't realise that babies feed every three or four that's hours. That's what you didn't expect. What did well, you expect? Well, I, didn't, I don't know what I expected. What, what was I expected the... it would be hard, that's it. But what was the image that you had in your head about? Oh, I thought I'd be wearing, like, I bought some silk pyjamas. I thought I'd be in my silk pyjamas. What's more funny is your mum laughed at it as well. I know. She's like, oh, you won't be wearing those. I'm like, oh, my God, whatever. I'm just going to be a stay-at-home mum wearing silk pyjamas in bed watching Netflix. Literally. Is your baby sleeping? Yeah. That's my baby sleeping. I thought I'd go to cafes. Mm, was too scared to leave the house. I don't know, I'd feel like that. But anyway. That's, yeah, a, that's an amazing thing. That's sort of what I expected. And I thought she'd be, be wearing beautiful clothes. I'd be taking beautiful photos of her and be dressing her and having a lovely bedtime routine and letting people come over and hang out by the babies. That's what I expected. That's something that you should be really proud of is that, like you said, when we first got here, you didn't even want to leave the house. No. It didn't help that it was raining the first people we got here, but... 
and now you pretty much are hardly at the house. Yeah, I walk a lot. <laughs> it's good being outside all, all the time. But also you go, go into the bell all the time. They now... First name basis. What, first the name basis Cafe. today. Three of them knew my name. Winning. <laughs> Actually four, including Jack, but he wasn't there. Because he's just had a baby. Just had a baby. Was partner. <laughs> Shout uh, out. Yeah. What didn't you expect? I didn't expect it to be so relentless. And sleep deprivation sleep you can't even understand. Sleep deprivation feels like that you're deeply depressed. So that's very scary, especially when you're home alone and responsible for a crying baby and you have zero patience. You can see how people end up shaking the baby. Honestly, you can understand that now. Yeah, it's really, really, really scary. And you actually feel hungover slash drunk. And imagine being hungover and jet lagged and you cannot rest that was back to what you were what you were saying when you wake up in the morning and you go like how can I even do this day and and even then it's not even really like you wake up you get woken up yeah you're not just waking up at your own (laughs) pace it's like someone wakes you up but I've been thinking oh I should Billy sleeps until 6 6 30 sometimes 7 anywhere between 6 and 7 um, mostly. And mostly, <laughs> and um, what's I even gonna say? Oh, I've been thinking maybe I should get up. Let's say she slept till six thirty most days consistently. <laughs> I've been thinking, oh, if I wake up around six or like five thirty or six, I should just get up and have the, a bit of a morning to myself and make my breakfast. Make a tea or whatever and just have like a little bit of time instead of being woken up by her and thrown into it straight away you know what I mean mm. like rather than being oh I feel like I start on the back foot a little bit because I start the day with my hands full it's not like I start the day getting myself ready in order to look after her it's like starting the day it's fine like she's easier now you know, like I feed her. I've got like a bit of a morning thing down with she's, you being she's lots of fun on the too. Yeah, she's really fun. Mm. And I feed her in bed normally, and then we bring her out to the lounge and we give her a nappy free time, seeing as she's been wearing a nappy all night and she loves that. And and she's in the she's out here with us, and then after a while, I'll feed her again, and then. Ryan usually feeds her breakfast, Stands, solids. Start with solids, it's yeah. also fun. She's loving food. <laughs> and Ryan normally does that. And he... She ba- she, she tries to eat my breakfast as well. Yeah. Yeah. Eats my bacon. She tries to eat the bacon. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I've kind of gone off topic here. Sorry, what, what I didn't expect. <laughs> no, that's all good. Um... Oh, what else didn't I expect? I didn't expect to feel so... I didn't expect to achieve so little in the day. Uh, for me, it's really hard to let go of this new way of life. I mean, it's only been six and a half months of a completely new way of living. So it's taking time, but I find it really hard. Sometimes I'm like, oh, let's just get out the door and I'll, I'll walk her in the front pack. And she's getting tired, so I need to put her in the front pack before she loop, mount, like, has a meltdown. I need her to be in like a situation where she could go to sleep, otherwise she'll just lie on the floor screaming because she's yeah getting really tired. So I'm like, oh my god, I need to get her like ready for bed. Either put her in bed or wear her. So I'm like, oh, okay, I better put her in the front pack and I'll go for a walk. And so I just walk away from everything in the house. You're like, oh my god, I haven't brushed my teeth. I haven't actually gone to the toilet. Um, left my hot cup. Of drink, my drink on the table, cool. Oh, well. I'll have a look to the mirror, like, do I have food in my teeth? <laughs> you know, like, you just have to let go of, like, feeling organised, and I find it really hard. I like things to be in order. I like to get the kitchen tidy in the morning so the rest of the day just feels a bit more organised. I don't know, having a clean kitchen 
space for me really helps. But you still make topic, the beat, eh? Still make the beat, kind of. Yeah. That's how we made it. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, what's been your greatest joyful moment? Well, that's... Um, <laughs> Glasses on, red wine. Uh, well, the greatest moment was the birth. Is that counted? Mm. And uh, but at the moment, she's kind of talking, not with words, but it's really cute. She's, <laughs> oh my god, I mean, oh, she's so cheeky. Just seeing her personality is really joyful at the moment she will be lying on the ground happily playing then she'll sort of realize oh i'm on my own on the ground i'm bored now and then start grizzling we'll come over and nothing's wrong like you just you lift her up and she'll start laughing <laughs> she'll look around <laughs> like doing this i can't do it she's like <laughs> like this and all of a sudden you're like what are you laughing at like what are you Saying. She's making all these sounds like I had her in her little seat on the beach feeding her, and then she's sort of writhing around in it and arching her back. So I like lifted her out, and she just started. She saw something on the beach, and she's just laughing at like, ah, 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 ah. I'm like, what? What are you finding so funny? Just seeing that is really cool. Yeah, and it hurt when she can sit up. Hallelujah. It's going to be a good day, people. <laughs> my my joyful moments have been like... Yeah, what about you? Um, So, the other day, I don't know how many years ago, but I just sort of, I was lying on the couch and had her on my chest and she was sucking on my thumbs and it was just like, had my thumbs like fully in her mouth and I, oh I, I, I like started that. cracking up laughing and then so she cracks up laughing back. <laughs> and then the other... Another so not so long ago, I was getting her ready for bed and she like, she does this thing to relax or unwind. She kind of grabs her feet and like kicks her bed around. But this time she like grabbed both feet and kind of pulled them into her chest and did this gigantic fart. <laughs> and so I just was cracking out laughing with tears in my eyes. And then she just was like cracking out laughing back at me. That was in your so mum. That was in your mum. Your mum was here. Yes, I think. Or was it I my, remember or that. Was it my mom? I think your mum. Yeah, and I was, you guys can just hear me cracking yeah, and laughing like, and her, laughing her cackling back. It's oh, so cute. It's so funny. But I get excited thinking about her being older and being able to do more activities with her mm. and not be so uh, regimented in the routine. It's not that regimented, but I... And I wish it was <laughs> more strict, but yeah. Um, what I'm saying, when she doesn't have to have three day sleeps in order to feel happy, when she can survive off one 40 minute nap, it's going to be so different. You can actually go out for a whole day, she can nap in the car, you know? We did pretty good on Sunday. We went 8 30 to yeah, three Sunday. or so. We were out and about. That's the longest we've been out with her. Yeah, she did awesome. She slept in the pram. She slept in the car. Slept in the car moved her from the pram to the car and she stayed asleep, which doesn't happen ever. Um, yeah, we were out and about. It was really fun. She did really good. She hardly cried all day. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, she loves being out. She loves that. She's very social, walking down... Fletcher's, street. Fletcher's tree branches cracking up at people yeah. like, talking to them or something. She loves going out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gets that from her dad. Yeah. Oh my God, help me. <laughs> yeah, but what was I saying? Or oh, when she's older. I, I'm really excited for that, to do activities for her, like set up stuff even in the evening for her to wake up to and come out and play with or... Mm getting into painting and doing art stuff or cooking or whatever or being able to go to the beach and for her to actually play in the sand at the moment you lie her on the, on the sand on, on the towel and if she's kicking you don't want her to kick sand in her eyes and like 
get upset or I don't know, I feel really anal saying that. But she doesn't enjoy the beach. Like she likes being down there if you're carrying her, but she doesn't really get to play on the beach. Yeah, she like loves going with you into the waves and well, you don't really take her in the water. Not wa- in the water. Like, you're holding her. Sharks, you're, you're, yeah. s- you're standing in the waves and you're watching, watching the waves coming in out over your feet. She likes yeah, it. she likes that, and she never cries down on the beach unless yeah. you lie her down. Yeah. Sand. <laughs> she likes putting her feet in the sand. Yeah, that sensory stuff. But it'd be cool once she's really has more independence. I think I'm looking forward to her having independence. I think it makes it make her a bit happier. Do you think? Yeah. Going back to your identity, do you mm. think you're quite a creative person as well? And that by that, that at that stage where her like inquisitiveness and her own creativity you can sort of share in that and be creative um, with her and things like that. Do you think that's partly what you're looking for? Well, getting back to creativity. Oh, just one moment if you're watching. One moment, please, Nicholas. I've just actually been doing my hair in the front end, so it's awesome. Yeah, so. This book. God. The Postnatal Depletion Cure. Written by a GP who's in Byron. He says that, I don't, I can't find the page off the you know, top of my head, but. Something about new mums have this sort of like newfound creativity that that comes after you've had a baby, and you should really harness it and use it. Like you w- will feel more creative, and that's why a lot of mums start businesses. And yeah, I do really, really want to start a project or start something, um, start a business I can do from home or. I just have this desire to live a different life to what we live now. I'm not definitely not ungrateful for the life we live, but I, I feel like we're close to the life style I want to have, but not there. I wish Ryan could be home more. I just wish both parents could do the parenting an equal amount. Mm. You know, like that just that doesn't sound too ridiculous, does it? It doesn't, does it? It'd be, it'd be awesome as well. Like you the, know? The weekends are so much wish. fun. Yeah. And in terms of from like mental health, it'd just be so much better for both people to to help each other, I think, and have more balance in your life. I just want more, more balance, or I'd like to do something really different and not live a conventional, like a conventional life. I think it goes Live also, in a house bus or something. <laughs> and, or a and, yurt. And travel around Australia and see Australia or go live in Bali for a few months. Yeah, just live a really minimal life. But it also goes like further into what you were saying about it. Others, it's so much more fun when you get to share it with yes. people. Yeah, that's really true. And like the weekend mm. seems to go so much smoother. Yeah, and when my sister and her boyfriend were here, we were out and about doing normal stuff I would do if I didn't have Billy. You know, like I just feel more. But you're doing it with Billy as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm comparing that to going to mum groups. You know, like going to coffee groups or or baby classes or whatever. It's either doing that and meeting other mums or like going out and just doing the stuff you would normally do but with baby. Mm. If that makes sense. We might have already answered this, but what's been the most challenging? Um, probably the sleep and no more time for yourself. Mm. Yeah, for me it's been Yeah. Being at work being at work and being helpless. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always texting Ryan, like, why did she only sleep 30 minutes? What am I going to do? I've been patting her for 40 minutes to get her back to sleep. Oh, my God. Why? I'm, like, I'm not there. I, I, one, I don't know because I'm not there, which is also really hard because when you are there, you get so much, such a better gauge of actually what's going on. Yeah. Like, sometimes when I'll get home from work and you've had a bad day, I, like, need you to, like... Debrief me on what you've done so far. Yeah. 
and then it's like right so it's not it's not any of those things mm. although it's been there long then it might be those things <laughs> yeah you just don't know and it's then, not really that bad where it's been so long like not, now it's not now it's not it's it cool. used to be it used to be like that I'd be like she's been crying for four hours oh oh okay now it'll be time to feed her again yeah and that was that was one of I don't know about mistakes, but challenges that we had is that because Billy had colic and got really upset stomach, we went with feeding her every four hours and not wanting to overfeed her. And then obviously she grows and gets older, and that those rules change. And yeah, yeah, I guess not overfeed, but more like overload her. Yeah, because. Do you, reckon, do you reckon that's what you might have learned is adaptability and more, I don't know, flexibility, maybe? Mm. I don't feel like I'm on the other side of this. <laughs> you don't feel like you can appreciate learnings yet? No. No? Definitely not. Because you're still learning so much every yeah. day? Yeah. Every day is different. I'm definitely not, like, I never will be through to the other side of being a mum. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? But, um, I totally don't want more children. Mm. Um, I'm already selling baby stuff. I've got a huge bag of clothes for my dog to, like, to donate. Um, I'm going to sell the bed nest bed thing. Probably sell the snuggly. Although they can use that when they're older too, so I'm not sure if I'll sell it. Um, I'm such a fidgeter. Sorry to anyone watching this, it must be really hard to watch. Um, yeah, I really don't want more children. I really don't. And I just feel like it's quite therapeutic to sell the stuff. I just want to sell everything. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say something else, but I've forgotten. Um, something I picked up on that, Whitney Cummings. YouTube thing was about like bum shame and like one of the things is about that. Whitney Port? Whitney oh, what was I say Whitney Cummings? Whitney Port. Who's yes. Whitney Cummings? I think she's a comedian. Oh, okay. Just funny Joe Rogan. Whitney Port from the Hill. Yeah. She was saying like mum shame and that's like one of the things like oh you, and you keep hearing, Oh, you'll have another child or something like that. Yeah, like oh you'll have another one. Or oh you never know, you might change your mind. Or when Billy's eighteen months you'll you'll change your mind. You that. forget all this, all this stuff, apparently, but I've written it down, <laughs> and I won't forget. I don't want to be sleep deprived like that again. I'm sure it will happen when Billy gets unwell, or you know, you're not ever in the clear, are you? I guess when you're teenagers, you're going to be lying in bed worrying about what we're doing when you're out. You know, I'm very aware of that, <laughs> but um, I. That's what I was going to say. People say, oh, a second and third subsequent children will, just, they just fit in and they just go with the flow and the baby just has to go with what the older child does. And you don't worry about a routine, you don't worry anymore, you're more relaxed. But I've also heard the flip side that people didn't realise how it would still be really overwhelming to have a second child, that they'd still have the baby blues. They could still get postnatal depression after a second child. Um, even though they have more knowledge, this baby is completely different. You're still going to have to do heaps of night feeds. You're still going to have to get this baby into routine and teach this baby to self-settle if that's what you want to do or co-sleep again or whatever. You're still going to go through all of that stuff, the sleep deprivation again. Um, this baby might have different health issues or it might be a dream baby. Um... You know, like it's, it's people say, oh, the second one's easier, but I don't even know what I'm doing with Billy now. Like, how would I know the second time around? Sure, there's things I would know, you, you know, that I didn't know from day one with Billy. There's stuff I would know, and I, there's things I would do so differently. Like, I might actually get a home birth the second time around. Not going to be a second time, but. And I wouldn't let any people visit for like 40 days apart from like maybe my mum and dad or something. 
not this is for 40 days, only people um, like make a roster for people to drop off your groceries. Like, you know, you'll pay for them, like we'd pay for them, but get people to drop off meals and groceries and do our washing, take our washing away to a laundromat, we'd pay for them to do, do it, but get people just to help you, with, but not have people come to visit the baby. I would just want to be like in the house, like staying in bed, feeding the baby, no pressure to have a shower and get ready, just like forget all that, just no pressure. Just do 40 days on drinking soups, teas, focusing on breastfeeding and milk supply. How and even have you stay at home for that length of time too. Yeah. How, how good is broth? Yeah, but broth's really good. <laughs> But yeah, uh, that's what I'd do really differently. Uh, but yeah, like, do you agree with the second child thing, what I'm saying? Like, yes, you'd know what you're doing, but at the same time, you still don't actually know that baby. Yeah. And yeah. it's, they don't communicate in the beginning. No. It's just the same cry. And like I say, you still got to... The same thing. Still got to be at night. Still got to get up in the morning, spit in. Meet their, meet their needs and things like that. Mm. Still, they're still going to be having feeding every three hours in the morning. And mm. It's unsettled evenings. Like just because it's your second baby, they don't. That baby doesn't know that. Yeah. The baby, you might, they, she, they might colic again. Mm. Might have, you know, eight weeks of four hours of screaming at night. Do you know? Like it could happen again. Like that, that nearly broke me. Mm. It did. I'm standing in the shower crying, like, that is not my baby. I need to leave the house. I need to leave. I need to get out. Yeah. Like, I just don't think it's healthy for me to go through that again. Really. Mm. Like, I just don't. Yeah. It's tough, eh? Yeah, I, I don't want to do that again. I really don't, unless we had a full time nanny. I'm not even taking the piss. I'm not. If we, if we had a day and night nanny, with two different nannies, that's not that's not what happens. So. Yeah. Yeah. You just struck it lucky. <laughs> what? So you did have a nanny. Oh. <laughs> he's something else. He had something else. Um, Honest. Not, not that we want to give anybody any advice because advice is overwhelming and it's, it's sort of, I don't know, it's well meaning but it's hard, it's hard to hear advice. It, it's, mm. I think probably one of the things that we've learned from this is that it's an experience and John Mitchell quote, it's a journey. Um, this yeah, baby what thing. Do you, what yeah. do you mean? But, like, what's what's a piece of advice that you, or for others considering this path? And I think the, that book is, is, is best book. Read Sorry, this book. The book, again, is The Postnatal Depletion Cure. By Dr. Oscar Serilak. And who recommended that to you? I've just seen it on Instagram. Dr. Libby did. Oh, yes, oh my god, Dr. Libby. Yeah. Whoa, mind blank. Um, yeah, I wish I'd read this book before I had Billy and just like, gone more prepared and what, learned what different cultures do. Like, um, What's the concept for Ayurvedic, visitors? Oh, no visitors, only staff. <laughs> In Ayurvedic medicine, the woman, the mother, gets a daily massage with sesame oil, then after that, she has to have a one hour nap. Every day, for however long, I don't know how long, but imagine how much better you would feel if that was tradition, like that just happens after you've had a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have any tradition like that at all in this culture. So it's a, like, get on with it. But we what's we have a tradition of people? get on with it and buy stuff. That's yeah, very that's strange. Very disgusting. Um, advice for other people considering this path. Well, I like to hear you say about advice. I like talking to other parents who are doing the parenting thing 
now, like in today, mm. and to hear what products they use and recommend or what help they've gotten from doctors or, you know, what what external support they use and how they settle their baby to sleep or what routine do they use and how's that going for them. I like talking to them about what they're doing and what car seat did you buy or did you like it, did you not like it, you know, just hearing ideas from other parents and what parenting methods they're using or whatever. Like, I like... Yeah, I more see it as getting ideas from people rather than advice. But um, for other people considering becoming parents, um, something something we were talking about with my mum was like you were saying, whilst it was really important to prepare for the birth, you wish you'd also prepared for after the birth. Mm. And like, we even talked a little bit about it with your parents, is that like. You learn so much about the birth, and then you get home, and it's like, now what? Yeah, it's um, like you think it ends at the birth. Yeah. How do you think you could prepare for for after the birth? Well, wait, hang on. We were answering one question. Well, this is just like a piece, piece of advice or consideration. Oh. Like, oh, you, you said, like, you were so prepared for the birth, and then it came to afterwards, and you didn't really have the consideration apart from that you knew it was going to be hard yeah yeah how, how do you think you could better prepare for af- after the birth because i guess all the things i just said like have people like a roster of people that want to help you yeah who can bring you meals or you ask people hey do you do you want to help us after you have a baby like you're not coming over to to like look at the baby, can you come over and help us? Um, like, And if they say yes, be like, okay, what day suit you? Like, For a month we're doing like a roster and if you want to be on it, like do something like that maybe? Yeah. And I also, don't know. Um, also, also how you're saying about how when people do come visit, it's, <laughs> it's better for them to help with stuff and then you can settle the baby. Or... Yeah, it's really hard. Or well, for me, I found it hard to... Um, imagine someone else looking after my baby's needs it would just be easier for me to be holding the baby, feeding the baby whilst the people work around you and clean your bathroom or, or do your washing rather than the prefer- someone comes and sits on the couch and holds my baby while I rush around and do the cleaning no, <laughs> it should be the other way around the mum should be resting you know, bonding with the baby and other people should be doing the dishes for her. That's how I felt anyway. But for other people considering becoming parents, um, do hit my birthing, I think, like once you're pregnant. Uh, get your body into really good health before you get pregnant so you can try and avoid feeling unwell. Like, go see Dr. Steve. <laughs> And make sure you have no inflammation or anything like that. So you can hopefully have a smooth pregnancy and find a midwife you really like. One that really resonates with you. Uh, Yeah, just do your research. Um, Realise that once you've had the baby, that's it. So the baby is here. Then your life completely changes. So even to get into into the car and go to the supermarket to get a not really thing like simple stuff like that yeah I mean you can do it but it's not it's your life isn't carefree anymore so go and do all those carefree things like travel fly business class for god's sake <laughs> nah, just go and travel and go to all the festivals you want to go to and sleep in and just live your life before you um and create a really good support network before you have a baby and be super organised. <laughs> have your space ready when you're 30 weeks pregnant. You can, if you can. Um, advice I should have taken from my mum and borrow lots of stuff. <laughs> should have borrowed a capsule and borrowed a bassinet. I don't know. But now, but the flip side is... Um, 
if you buy baby stuff brand new, you can actually sell it and get good money back for it and then buy the next thing, like a car seat, which is $500. Save up money before you have a baby. Save. Don't move to Australia. Okay. Don't move away from the support network. Learn from our mistakes. Um, get someone in to help you in the first weeks, like Charlene Poole, who lives in Raglan, who is a baby whisperer, or there's a few of them in New Zealand or wherever, whichever country, someone that resonates with you. They can teach you techniques to settle your baby off off you, like settle the baby in the bed. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, yeah, people that can teach you how to put your baby in a routine, if that's what you want to do, it does make life easier, I think, in terms of being able to go out and do stuff. Um, but yeah, I think getting someone in to help you, someone that isn't family, because then you might actually listen to them. Um, Especially if you pay them help. as well. Yeah, if you pay them too. <laughs> they might make you feel more confident as a new mother, I think. I really wish I would have done that, just to give you that confidence. It's probably worth the investment. Um, this is my experience. Just on that confidence there, like... What do you think it is that so often you've said, oh, I'm a failure, or I feel like a failure, or I feel like I, say I can't do this. Can't do this. What do you think it is that, do you, do you get to the end of the day when things calm down and sort of then go, oh, it wasn't that bad, or do you, re do you remember being like that? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, like, even today... Or yesterday, it's just like you, you just get to the middle of the day, you're just like, I just want to go and complete some stuff. Like if I finish things I was doing, you just can't finish one thing at a time, I find. Like I'm in the middle of something and then I need to get Billy mm -hmm. and do something with her, or it's like, oh, she had a 35 minute sleep and she actually needs. And at least an hour of sleep, and oh, she's gonna be grizzly, and you need to fall asleep again in another hour, and then that kind of throws the whole day. And you're like, Well, how am I gonna settle her back to sleep? And she doesn't, and I'm just I don't know, you just get stuck in the, this like relentless cycle. And you all you want to do is like go and do something else. I'm like, I would love to just sit on Spotify and find out the new music and make a new playlist. <laughs> I want to, I can't just be like, Oh, I'm just gonna do that. You can't. Can you? Yeah. Like, there's mo heaps of moments in my day where I'm like, damn, I just want to do this. And whatever it is. I would like to go to the supermarket, buy some ingredients and bake some food. Can't do it. Because I don't have a car <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> yeah, like, you can actually go and do those things. I think I've just made it hard for myself. Like, I've, I've kind of let her, I've kind of become a slave to her a little bit. How good do you feel the days when you do bake some biscuits? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to have that, like, I just want to feel carefree again. Mm. I just like to say, hey, let's go to Sydney this weekend and go to the airport and just do it, just go. So you don't have to think, think about that. Think If it was just us, and we say, let's go to Melbourne for the weekend. Cool, book some flights, go. With a baby, Okay, we need to think about oversized luggage. What's she going to sleep in? When we get there, do we need to have a capsule with us? Or are we going to hire a capsule? Or are we going to use family-friendly transport? Um, what's she going to sleep in? We're going to take her a bed for her. We're going to buy a $400 porter cot. Oh, we're going to also make her food while we're there. Oh, will I take my breast pump or not? I don't need to. You know, like all these little things. Will we buy nappies there or here? And will we take the pram? And will we take the... If you take the capture, oh, it's just like mind fuck, mother of mind fuck. It is. <laughs> it's just not that carefree anymore. And you, people make it look like it is on Instagram, but you've got to think about a lot of stuff. And like, you just have so many tabs open in your head. And I'm sick of, some days I'm just sick of having to think on behalf of somebody else. I just want to think. I just want to have a day sitting in bed watching Netflix. Not thinking. Mm -hmm. 
that I have to constantly be deciphering cry, her cries and okay she's been awake for two and a half hours probably needs to go to bed or oh, I fed her at 10 so oh, she's nearly time for another feed now she's probably hungry and oh, you know constantly thinking and deciphering and it's not you you're thinking about it's very exhausting have you had a chance to um, mm. look back and see how much you've grown no no. I don't think I have changed. I just, I just feel like a blob. <laughs> it's all a blur. Mm. Um, your birthday is coming up, so do you think that might do something for you? No. No. Why? You can ask me what I want for my birthday. Oh, not on here. <laughs> Why not? I want a keep cup. A keep cup. Oh, I, I really like one of those ceramic. That. Um, I knew that already. The ceramic one? Spoiler alert for your birthday. No, because <laughs> I dropped my keep cup and it broke. <laughs> um, I really like the ceramic ones. I oh, know. There was one at um, Nuri Bar. Yeah. I like the pink one. But like even or the grey one. Even the th three and a half months that we've been here. <laughs> even the three and a half months that, that you've been here. Um, yes. To develop from... Not even wanting to go outside to then going on walks. I did want to go outside, but I didn't have Billy in a routine. I didn't want to, like, I'd start taking her in the pram and she'd be crying. And I'd be like, oh, I've got to help. Um, the, <laughs> the second day you were here, you were really motivated. That, that might have put you off, maybe, because you went to baby bounce. And how did that go? <laughs> Didn't, was that the second day you were here? Oh, I think so. Oh my god, because you made me go, you're gonna go, you're gonna go, you're gonna go, oh fine, I'll go. It was awful. I'm never going back. <laughs> I'm not, well, um, I just, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you, look at me. It's, it's coming back. You might go back now that, it, <laughs> now that it's more applicable though, right? I don't think so. The first, okay, I went to this thing called Baby Bounce at the library and it's like so amazing. It's, not, it's like 30 minutes. And I drove there and I got there late, but they screamed the whole way. Got her out, I was walking there and she was just crying on my arms the whole way. So I stopped outside the library, started breastfeeding her, walked in, breastfeeded her. Sat down, breastfeed her the whole time, then left. And then she spewed and then got in the car, she screamed again. And it's not like that for me. But that was what it was also like when you went to yoga at first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now she... You get to actually do a five minute meditation and she goes outside and mm. she ends up with the yoga teacher. Reads a story. She likes stories. She does like stories, yeah. Um but I guess if we wrap this up, the moral of the story is um, being a mum is a mind fuck. Mm. And that's normal. Is that what your podcast is gonna be called? Mother Mind Fuck? <laughs> Motherhood Mind Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, that you need to ask for help and you need to realise that 99% of the other mums are feeling just like this too and it's not peaceful and glamorous that you see on Insta. Yeah. So, for if you do do a podcast, what do you want to do? A podcast. It? Talking about this. Talking so. to other mums, I guess. Bringing out it's just like a therapeutic space for other mums to like just talk about how they're feeling. They could be anonymous. <laughs> I am talking with. <laughs> yeah. Change their mom voice. Mom one, mom Ch two. Change their voice. Three. Yeah, I've changed their voice. Hey, no, I don't, no, I've changed their voice. But um, yeah, can just sort of be a space for mums to talk about their struggles, and then other people can listen to it and be like. Oh my god, if people feel the same as me, I'm not alone. I can ask for help. Or there's other people in my tribe that, you know, you can find a tribe that way. There's, there are a couple of people um, well, I've met who love being mums. It's not many people who are like, I just love it. But there's people I know who do love it, which is awesome. But it's... And I would totally hang out with them, and I really admire them, but um, it doesn't resonate with me. 
like their experience doesn't resonate with my with me and my experience so it's it's kind of hard to connect sometimes because I just you just want to like bitch about it some days or just be like oh my god I'm just having like a really hard day but they sometimes <coughs> they just have like really good days all the time I don't know if I'm making any sense no, you're I'm not. tired but yeah you just want to find people who have sort of gone through the same struggles as you and find out what helped them and just openly just talk about it openly without feeling judged or feeling like crazy so, if they want to talk to you about being a mother, or they want to do a podcast with you, yeah, where do they? Where's the best place to talk to you? Instagram. Yeah. What are you? Just you're just Alex Bolle. Yeah. You got a you got a good one. She knows. Good at. Got your name. Well, you could have your name. I've, I've tried to look now. What have I've, you tried? Yeah, I think I think my name's gone. Try also, again. Hello. Also, also tried to change it to Instagram. <laughs> didn't work it's already taken I think it's because all the, that is still Instagram yeah I think it's because all the like handles are <laughs> lowercase but no 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 you know that Instagram is still Instagram yeah I, yeah, I know but I, I thought you could do it <laughs> small i n and then stag in capitals and then r a m and then lowercase but the handles are all lowercase so you can't do that it's just <laughs> you tried to have the name Instagram, but oh nice. God. What's what's one last thing you want to leave people with, Alex? Um, buy this book for every mum that you know. What's the book called? We'll link it in Post-natal the show notes. Postnatal depletion cure. All mums suffer from postnatal depletion. Um, let's find a quote out of here. Or everybody, just to leave you with something. Hmm. No. Just saw the words vaginal delivery. Yeah. Oh, vaginal. Vaginal. Hmm. Well. Oh, this is kind of interesting. There's so much I could leave, read to leave you with, but. Oh, choice overload, self doubt. Motherhood is a messy business. Changing endless dirty diapers and washing baby puke out of your favourite shirt is humbling. <laughs> How can you not be stressed when the baby is feeding what seems like 24 7 and you haven't slept properly in a month? This is compounded by physical stresses. Your body has been taxed by pregnancy and childbirth, by the demands of breastfeeding, by sleep deprivation, and by all the other demands associated with caring for another human being. Wow. It's just... That's what you got to deal with. That's what you've got to think about, and do you... Um, is that what you really want to do, right? I really think about it. Why why are you choosing to have a child? Anyway, speaking of sleep deprivation, we should go to sleep. Billy has been asleep since seven thirty. She's been doing amazing tonight. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We might go to sleep too. Bye. Thank you for listening. Get in touch if you've got any questions, thoughts, considerations. That's what the saying is, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Compliance. Complaints, yeah. If you want to complain, I don't know. Maybe talk to us. Read this book. Read, read the post now of the Cheers.